the stones. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Sean Hodgins and welcome back to my channel. So this is part two of the Arduino Geocache Locator. I think that's what I called it. I'm actually just outside right now hiding the last of the geocaches. I decided to make up a little story about how he has to find these different types of stones and then he has to collect them all and get them all back together. So. Right now I'm out at a location and I'll be collecting the GPS location and putting it in the program. So stick around and I'll show you how the program works and I'll show you how the whole system works. It's really cool. Anyways, let's get to it. Okay, now that we have placed all of the geocaches in their locations, hopefully they don't get stolen, I can uh, show you how the program works. Now, it's all programmed, everything does work that I want to work right now. However, I'm in the basement, so this is what it does when it is looking for a GPS signal. And you can also choose the different locations, places where these are hidden based on the color that it first shows in the ring. You can push the button and it will change the location. I've programmed in four different locations and I've put together a little story about how these rocks have become separated and he needs to collect them and then he'll use this to navigate to the locations and the map will show their respective colors so he understands. Anyways, uh, let's go through the program so I can show you how everything works and how the program works so you understand so you can modify it for your own locations. To start off we're using the wire library which is for I squared C um, and then the HMC 6352 library that's for the compass and then tiny GPS this is a library that is incredible works really well for collecting GPS information these are my entered in locations. I've obviously modified them so you don't know where my geocaches are. Then the current destination and the last destination are just choosing which two of these are currently selected. So if it was zero, it would be these two. If it was one, it would be this, this one and this one for the Latin long. And that just cycles through them. That's the basically the menu system. This in red, green, blue, that is for selecting when it gets closer and further. That's for making the LEDs illuminate. Then we're using the NeoPixel library from Adafruit, which is obviously incredible. It works really well with their NeoPixel ring. So then we define the button, which is pin four. Then this pin, this is for the NeoPixels, pin one. And the number of pixels on this ring is 16. So that's that number there. And here's some random variables that I use, spread, dir course, and destination distance. So spread is going to be how far the LEDs spread out, depending on how close you are. So the further away you are, the less LEDs will be illuminated, so you know you have to get closer to it. And as you get closer, it spreads out. So that's how you're kind of aware. And I've got some distance parameters in there. Uh, this is just defining the GPS to know where it gets its information from. Then we've got the setup, so we set up the button, uh, begin the I squared C, we initial both the serials on the trinket, because one is the USB and one is the pins. We turn the button into a input with an internal pull-up, because I didn't add any resistors. We begin the NeoPixels, that just initializes the NeoPixels for the I squared C things to check and see if the GPS is working. That's what that colorful light was. Rainbow cycle. It's waiting for the GPS. And once the GPS is enabled, it goes into the current destination and it shows the color of the destination that you're trying to get to right now. Now this program, obviously, it's a little messy. As with every gift, 
you never have enough time to make it perfect. You're almost always rushing. So it works, but it's messy. This again is just checking the state of the button, whether it's pushed. And if it does push, it runs this routine destination change, which obviously switches the menu. We wake up the compass, it takes the heading, which I just call north, very simple, and then it puts it back to sleep. And the GPS is constantly spitting out information. That's how they work. They just keep giving you information as basically as fast as they can collect it. And that's normally the limiting point of a GPS. So it's trying to see what information's coming in, and then if the location has been updated, in this case it says is valid, then it's actually going to check the distance to that. And these are all built into the library. This library is really incredible. It's got so many features. So this will actually calculate the distance, which we're gonna use to display how wide the LEDs show. This will actually show the course to that. We get the course that is just from this box without a direction. So now that we have the compass, we know which direction the box is, so we have to compare that to the GPS direction. So we do that here. First we determine the spread, so... And then we have the course, which is just north minus the course that the GPS gives us. And if the course goes less than zero, then we add 360 to it. That means it stays within the bounds of a zero to 360 circle, because we can't display anything outside of this 360 ring, of course. These are some things for controlling the color. So if the distance is greater than 500 meters, it's gonna actually add a bit of red until it goes fully red if it's further than a kilometer. And then if this distance is less than 700, it's gonna add a bit of green to the color. And then as you get closer, it'll turn to just fully green. So you know you're heading in the right direction. It'll go from red, slowly turn to orange, yellowish, and then green. And that's how you know, you're going the right way. Of course, if you get within 10 meters, which I figure is probably good enough, a radius, then it's going to play this theater chase rainbow, which is a crazy light show that knows you're within the vicinity. And then he can use his map or the little images that I made that will kind of give a hint as to where I hit it so that he can actually find the capsule. And this pixel show is how you display the LEDs, but it also clears them. So here is the routine for the direction spread, is what I call it. It's the spread of the LEDs. Well, first it corrects where north is, because this LED ring, number one, is actually somewhere here. And if we say that north is straight up, it's actually going to point here if we say it's zero, so we have to offset it by four LEDs. So that's why it says negative four to 12. That's actually offsetting the entire ring, just like that. And then, of course, if you go less than zero, then you have to add 16 to it because you only have 16 LEDs, and you have to write to them, you have to define those boundaries. So all this does displays the correct location and how many LEDs wide. So that's all that this is for. This is, uh, and these two parts of it is just to specifically only for the overlap from where it goes to 15 LED to zero. Because we encounter an issue in the programming, it's just a difficulty in the programming and defining those boundaries. Again, there's probably a really easy way to do this. I'd probably pick the hardest way to do it. Okay, destination change, I showed you that before. That just changes the current destination and then checks it with the old one, and if the old one's different, then it's going to run the routine to make the color blink, which is right here, and it says if it's location zero, then it's gonna be all red. If it's location one, it's all green. If it's location two, it's all blue. In location three, it's red and green, which makes yellow. We have some things that were just taken directly from the Adafruit example for the NeoPixels for running these different cool programs. This is Rainbow Cycle, once again, sped up a little bit. These are built into it, wheel again built into it. They're just ways of displaying cool things on the NeoPixel ring. So I just took those directly from their example program, obviously. And that's it. So 
when he is given this gift, I'm going to put one right in their backyard so he understands what they're looking for. So that when they go out and try and find them, they'll know where to look and they'll have a bit of hints and they'll make sure that they're actually able to find them because that wouldn't be any fun. So that is the Arduino geocache locator. I think I'm going to maybe improve upon it and make a custom circuit board. It's a cool idea. People seem to like it. Maybe make it a bit smaller. But for now, you know, you can download these parts on Thingiverse, link below. You can build your own, put in your own coordinates, and make your own little geocaches, or even use it to locate some of the ones on the websites that exist already. And that's it. It worked out really well. I'm really happy with it. And uh, I can turn it into something new later on when it gets bored of it, like I mentioned. So anyways, everyone, you know the deal. I hope everyone's having Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And if you think I earned it, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we will see you in the new year. You know the deal. Be good and have a good day.